somebody had stockfish and no it wasn't me and made a trollfish a bot that will troll you in every game it will make a winning position into a forced draw so i wanted to see can trollfish actually draw against strong bots so i paired it up against the car bot and stockfish 16 in two different games and we got rook sacrifices we got brilliant moves we got everything two exciting games so let's just jump into it boys and even in the first game with hikaru and trollfish playing in this game we have a brilliant move and a rook sacrifice it's actually crazy we get a weird symmetrical kind of structure and this might look like an unusual opening but on the next move we just see it's a queen's gambit decline right you can get the openings from different starting moves like you can play d4 d5 c4 and then play e6 and it's the same opening that we just got and it's played pretty normally we get knight to f6 we get knight to c3 and here for a million dollars i would just play bishop to e7 but trollfish decides to be a bit of a troll and plays the benoni it plays c5 this is not a bad move for example but queen's gambit decline usually bishop to e7 is like your bread and butter so we get c takes d5 we get e takes d5 and hikaru decides to give a check this is not like one of those beginner moves that oh i see a check i must give a check this is actually a pretty fine move here the knight blocks and now watch this knight carefully because hikaru is gonna try to apply so much pressure in this position so he plays knight to f3 black plays bishop to d6 which i don't know why trollfish did this i thought like just d takes c5 and now your bishop has to move again bishop d6 seemed like a redundant move bishop e7 just makes much more sense but now instead of castling in this position white actually jumps the knight into the center putting more pressure on this just spin knight and black has a lot of choices here black can castle black can take this knight but black decides to play the best move which is queen to c7 basically putting a uno reverse card and saying no i'm putting pressure on your pieces and here for a million dollars i will give you a million dollars if you guess this next move if you gave me a million dollars to come up with a move i would maybe castle maybe i would take the knight i don't know develop the bishop do queen a4 anything hikaru bot plays pawn to f4 bro what is f i i don't understand this is why i love these bot games because they're so confusing and now as you can see trollfish is winning it's minus one but here is where i remember trollfish actually is gonna try to draw the game any chance it gets in this position where instead of castling or doing anything normal it plays queen to b6 what a stupid looking move like what does that do it doesn't attack the bishop that's for sure and hikaru again he can castle he can like take the knight he decides to play queen a4 he wants to put more pressure in this position now he has a queen and bishop battery a knight everything is staring at this pin knight uh, on c6 and while everything looks dangerous in this position trollfish is just chilling trollfish is actually better in this position you just take the d pawn and now there's a sequence of moves that has to be calculated carefully right white decides to take the knight on c6 and now you actually don't want to take the knight back why because bishop takes if you block with the bishop i can just take knight takes I mean, I'm gonna take the d5 pawn, hit your queen. It's not really pleasant for black to play like this. So when white takes your knight here, you can actually not take it back with a pawn. You actually want to take the knight on c3. But now we run into a problem where any knight move is discovered check. Luckily, in this position, there's no dangerous discovered checks. So the knight just rotates back, but... This check is not dangerous. Black can just block the check with his own knight. So after white recaptures the pawn on c3, Trollfish decides to make a battery of its own, right? A queen and bishop, queen and bishop, both of these batteries staring at a knight. Nuke Nation. We have to destroy Ali Reza in subscribers before the end of the year. Nuke the subscribe button. And let's prove that we're just like better than Grandmasters, okay? Now, back to the video. And Hikaru here plays a3 right wanting to just cause some problems but in this position there is the brilliant move i talked about can you find it for black do you sack your queen of course you don't martin you were just gonna lose the queen do you sack the knight what what do you do there's not a lot of pieces to move you just castle <laughs> it's an actual brilliant move in this position yep just castling here and just optically looking at this you might say this has to blunder something right bishop takes knight if bishop takes bishop do i have anything i mean if queen takes bishop i can just take your bishop on a3 and if you think you're smart and you like oh i'm gonna take black's bishop and attack their queen well we have a few options in this position first of all i can just take your queen you take and i take and the game is pretty equal but the engine line here is actually queen to b2 attacking your rook you cannot move your rook anywhere because you would just lose your queen right the queen is still hanging so you have to play queen to d1 in this position but now i have queen take c3 with check and i'm gonna pick up your bishop crazy tactic for black here and it all comes from just castling in this position but hikarbot doesn't decide to go crazy hikarbot just decides to castle as well but now strollfish knows that 
it has to go to the other side and fight. So it just starts moving all of its pieces. It moves the knight, and Hikarubot is kind of scared here. He's like, I sense an attack. My king is a bit weaker than Black's king is. Hikarubot trades the bishops, and now goes for a queen trade. But Trollfish doesn't want to trade the queen here, even though Trollfish likes to go for draws. It actually likes to start winning the game, and then in the winning position, go for a draw. And after rook to b1, look at how beautifully Trollfish plays this. Kicks the bishop out completely, and now Hikaru is like, oh, we need to start some attack. We need to get aggressive. Rook to f3, we want to do a rook lift pretty obvious idea right you want to bring the rook over to g3 and try to somehow checkmate black or just win material in this position the problem is white isn't the only one with rooks here and now we're gonna see why white is slightly worse in this position the pawns are weak the e pawn is weak the c pawn is weak the a pawn is weak after a3 we just get h5 and black is the one that's actually gonna be attacking and hikaru is really trying hard to find some sort of checkmating attack he jumps the knight in obviously going for g7 trollfish just doesn't care you just take the knight with your bishop you get a trade you usually don't want to trade bishop for knight these pawns are so weak that it, it doesn't really matter whether i have a bishop or a knight and again look at the evaluation bar minus 2.3 for trollfish it's completely winning and the best move here knight to e4 why you attack the rook you're also putting pressure on this pawn and if the bishop takes you can just simply take with the rook when the evaluation says you're lost it doesn't mean that there's a move or a tactic that you need to do just look at the position and a few moves i mean this pawn is weak we can double up over here make the c pawn weak we can double up over here make the e pawn weak and think about it if the e pawn falls the king is kind of vulnerable on this diagonal the position is just not good for hikaru but how does trollfish take this minus 2.4 position and turn it into an equal game well it goes for a queen trade now it's still completely winning because the pawns are again still weak but hikaru actually doesn't want a queen trade here he plays rook to d1 but look at what trollfish does king to h8 he, uh, trollfish is just like uh i'm just gonna chill out here you know this position is pretty comfortable for me so he tries to retreat the rook you don't really want to get your rook trapped between the pawns h4 might be coming at some point this pawn push is gonna be really dangerous so hikaru but just moves the rook wanting to retreat it back but now g6 and i'm kicking your bishop out hikaru actually takes the time here to first trade the queens and then move the bishop back but this is still completely losing for white why well Look at this, rookie 7. Do you think we're gonna double the rooks here? Well, actually, that's not the best move. After white plays h4 here, you wanna play king to g7. Why do you wanna play king to g7? Why not just double the rooks and go after the weak pawns? Well, you're gonna see why you play king to g7 in that position. So Trollfish actually doubles the rooks, wanting to go for the e pawn. But look at this, f5. Wanting to break the pawn chain and also wanting to attack this knight. So now you can take the pawn on e3, but I can just take your pawn on g6. And now your knight is hanging. You cannot take back because you would lose a knight, right? So that's why when your king was on g7, the knight wouldn't be hanging. Small details like this make such a huge difference in games, especially when you're at the grandmaster level of chess. So now Trollfish is forced to play king to g7, but now I can take the f7 pawn. And now we're kind of tied in material. You didn't really get a huge advantage. And Hikaru is trying to go for swindles, trying to go for tricks. He plays rook to f1. He sees the knight is pinned, but this is not really a dangerous move because you're just kind of a move too late. I can trade the rooks over here. And look at this. E1 and I'm going after the A pawn. And we're in an endgame that's completely equal. But the Trollfish is actually going to get an advantage here. And you're going to see how. First of all, why is this endgame equal? Doesn't white have weak pawns? Like, isn't Trollfish just going to win all of those pawns? That is true. But Hikarubot also has a bishop that's a light square bishop. And all of black's pawns are on light squares. Look at this. They're all targets for this bishop. And now both sides start walking the king in. Okay, first Hikaru. Now you could have just taken the A3 pawn here. I don't know why Trollfish didn't do this. Instead, it went after the bishop but i just moved the rook and i defend it again both sides walk the king in but now we go after the h pawn again easy to defend g3 and we get a5 now a5 is kind of a smart move because you put your pawn that's a potentially a pass pawn on a dark square so this bishop cannot target it the problem is i got other pawns to target i'm gonna target the h pawn at some point right and even though this position looks very drawn and it is drawn in a few moves hikaru's king is gonna wander in trollfish is gonna give a check with the knight the king goes back and look at this in a few moves trollfish is gonna give up the h pawn this looks completely scary in a blitz game this might be a bit harder to defend because now you're opponent has two connected pass pawns but look at what trollfish does gives a check we get a bit of shuffling but it coordinates the pieces in such a way that you cannot move your bishop off of this diagonal why well if you move your bishop it's actually checkmate in one so it kind of paralyzes the position for white and look at this great sequence hikaru gives a check on f6 now black can move the knight block the check and he can block the check with a check of his own and hikaru is just like a giga chad here he decides to sacrifice the rook in this position i would never stack the rook in this position if i was playing like a blitz game and i had like 30 seconds on the clock this would be kind of scary to defend without a rook so hikaru starts pushing the pawns but trollfish is gonna walk the king in and give a few tracks and you're gonna see how it's gonna create 
create a pass pawn of its own, right? So the bishop goes back, and now we get a check with the pawn. Takes, takes, and guess what? The king cannot cross the D file. The king is cut off, and this pawn is three squares away from promoting. It's gonna be very dangerous. But now h6, and the other pawn is also gonna promote. Oh my god, what is happening? Which pawn is gonna actually promote? Who is gonna win this race? Trollfish plays c3, again, two squares away from promotion. And here, Hikarobot plays a very strange move. Pawn to a4. I have no idea what this does because the engine gives a lot of suggestions to just basically draw the game. I mean, you can play h7. Uh, my favorite move here is just like bishop to c2, stopping the pawn. You can play bishop to b1. A lot of moves draw. a4 actually sort of loses. Why? Well, you can bring your rook back, target this, and you can get your rook active. The thing with a bishop is this bishop cannot defend the pawn if it's on a dark square. And the promotion square is a dark square. So you kind of get into a weird situation where actually black is winning but trollfish is a big troll so it plays <laughs> pawn to c2 sacrificing the pawn obviously winning the g pawn and now boys i'm not gonna bore you with this we get basically a hundred moves of uh, just a, a, a rook and bishop endgame until we get to the move 109 where trollfish decides to be a big troll again and decides to sacrifice the rook on a4 why well because after the bishop takes the rook on a4 i'm just gonna take your pawn and you're only left with one bishop and that is not enough to win the game so trollfish does his job correctly and draws hikaru very easily and it could have won in a lot of situations if it wasn't programmed to troll can trollfish actually draw against well the real stockfish uh these following games are about to blow your mind so now it's turn for the god of chess stockfish 16 who is 3500 rated all of you levy kids stop saying it's 4000 rated okay look it says it here stockfish 16 3500 stop but we do get a very weird opening in this game and you're gonna see it's fascinating what both of these engines do in this game we get in like a reverse sicilian look at this but it quickly it turns into the four knights which i hate any opening that has four knights on the board like tell me you're boring without telling me you're boring but in this case stockfish actually kind of makes it interesting i have to admit and now we see moves that you would see even in like a queen's gambit type position we get e3 to you know let the bishop loose at some point now we get black's bishop pinning the knight and we get queen to c2 very useful move stopping the knight from jumping into e4 but also maybe sometimes when the bishop takes you want to take with a queen depends on the situation and black here just castles pretty normal opening so far until white decides to just jump the knight into d5 no, this does a few things. It attacks the bishop, it attacks the knight. So what would you would you take the knight in the center? What would you do in this position? Well, Stockfish is not worried. Just place rook to e8. If you take my bishop, I take with my knight, I hit your queen. And if you take this knight, I take with the queen and I activate another piece. You didn't do literally anything. But the Trollfish wants to go for the absolute kill. So it jumps the other knight into g5. What is the threat? Let's say Stockfish plays a6 like a Martin. Well, now you can take. And if queen takes, I mean, I'm just taking here. I'm up upon. Do you really want to play? this position no you don't and if you're an absolute nelson and you take with a pawn well now you can just get checkmated bro <laughs> like boop 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 you're just done but again stockfish is like that guy in an anime that gets punched a million times and doesn't even flinch g6 you're not scary bro you're not doing anything so after takes we just get the queen taking and the position is dead equal again the knight drops back attacking the queen <laughs> Stockfish just brings the queen back to d8. Trollfish plays a3 to attack the bishop. The bishop just goes right back. Look at how weird this looks. All the pieces are on the back rank, even though everybody tells you activity, activity, activity. But actually, Stockfish is just patient and it's gonna get a lot of activity really quickly. How? Well, it's gonna put the bishop on g7 and on the next move, it's gonna play f5, kicking the knight out. The knight has to rotate somewhere. And then in a few moves, it's just gonna push the e pawn and open up this bishop. And now the knight is pinned to the rook and Stockfish got all of its pieces active, but it also got a lot of control control in the center and it got a lot of space on the opponent's side so obviously trollfish doesn't want to be pinned it unpins itself with bishop to b2 right a nice little fianchito and again we look at the evil bar it's zero so how does anybody win in this position or push for advantage well both sides put the knight into the center nice little outpost by the pawn right but now stockfish actually attacks white's knight with its bishop right trying to develop it the knight moves attacking the bishop and the bishop just goes back it still stays active right it doesn't go back to where it was keeping an eye on that pawn even though this pawn is not hanging for now trollfish actually decides to push this pawn and this is the first very slight mistake that it makes but this is all that stockfish 60 needs it's just the slightest slightest mistake and you're gonna die basically you don't need to take this pawn boom d5 okay we take more space now trollfish decides to play f3 to kind of break this pawn chain apart but this is not scary i'm gonna push my g pawn kick your knight out and then i'm just taking an f3 and as you can see white's king is slowly becoming weaker and weaker people tell you do not push the pawns in front of your king when you castle but stockfish 
just doesn't care about rules. It just does what it needs to do to win. So now we get F4. Stockfish continues pushing, continues breaking through. And now the best move in the position is King to H1. Very weird move and very like passive move to play, right? But Trollfish doesn't want to be passive. It makes a Queen and Bishop battery wanting to go for H7. And in this position, Stockfish is like, <laughs> really? You want to take on H7? Good luck with that, buddy. I'm taking on H3. You can have H7. I'm just going to move my King to H8. It's funny that in this position, going to F8 actually just loses the game to F4. Because uh, if you take, I take with the Knight. And look at this position. It looks pretty miserable. My Bishop can take here. The Queen, the Rook, everything is kind of aiming at your King. You have no pawns in front of your King. But just this one small little King move can either make or break the game. And now Trollfish plays F4. But F4 doesn't work the same in this position that it does in the other one. So I can just take your Pawn. Trollfish takes with the Rook here. But guess what? Pawn to E2. I'm threatening to promote, okay? My Rook is behind the Pawn. You have to be really careful. Trollfish is like, bro, what did I do? What did I do? Okay, I rookie one. I'm gonna stop this pawn. But now d4. And you might say, isn't d4 stupid? Why would you play d4 in this position? Can I now just take the pawn? You can take the pawn if you want to die instantly. Because now I have bishop to e6. Look at this beautiful move. Attacking the knight. Where is the knight gonna go? If it goes here, I just take with the queen. And if you think you're smart and you go back to f2. Well, now my queen goes in with check. Okay, I'm just gonna win your rook. And if you think you're extra smart and you're like, oh, I'm gonna block the check with my rook that's guarded by the knight. I'm so smart. You're just an idiot, bro. It hangs like a, a million different ways. <laughs> you're not doing anything here, okay? But Trollfish doesn't take the pawn on e2. Instead, it brings the queen in wanting to get it active and wanting to, like, start something. It needs some sort of attack to get out of this terrible situation. Rook f8, bro. You have nothing. You literally have nothing in this position. So Trollfish has to take the pawn on e2. But now, it's not pawn to e6 that's gonna win the game for me. It's actually pawn to c4. Attacking the rook and attacking the queen. And if you're white, you have to sacrifice the queen here. That is the only thing to, like, keep you somewhat in the game. You sack your queen. And now black can get tricked here very easily. If black takes with the bishop, you can take the knight. And now suddenly material is equal, okay? Never resign a position like this in a game. But Trollfish wants to get into even bigger trouble. So it plays queen to h5. And this is a very tricky move. Let's say Stockfish, again, smokes crack and plays c6, for example. Well, now you have just checkmate in three. You move the bishop back with discover check. If the bishop blocks, you take, okay, and this is mate. And if the king just moves, this is mate. Again, a mate in one, the bishop holds the escape square. But Stockfish is not an idiot. Stockfish doesn't fall for these easy tactics. It just takes the rook on e2, attacking your queen again. The discover check now doesn't work because I can just take your queen. And now we get a bunch of traits. Okay, we get rook takes rook. Again, you don't want to take with the bishop. You take with the queen to keep your knight guarded. Now the queen goes backwards, takes the bishop on e2. And you might say material is almost equal here. But what you forgot is that, well, your bishop on h7 is now hanging because the queen moved. So actually, Stockfish is up a piece. And you're gonna see how Stockfish wins the game. It's such a giga chat way to win the game. So bishop takes pawn. The queen walks in. And this looks just like super dangerous because the rook is gonna swing over. All the pieces are there. After d3, we give a check with the knight. And in this position, king to h1. It's made in like 13 moves. For Stockfish, finding made in 13 is as easy as it is for Nelson to blunder a queen. So, Trollfish actually decides to sacrifice the queen. You don't even take the queen in this position. Why? Well, if you take the queen, I can actually give a check and fork you. Winning the queen back, right? The king moves... I take your queen and I defend my bishop. But it's not a force to win like what Stockfish does here. Stockfish actually takes the bishop with check. After the king moves up, again, we don't force a queen trade. We, we don't have to rush anywhere. Rook check first. The queen blocks. And again, we don't take the queen yet. Queen to d5 check first. Now the king moves again. And now we take the queen. You can take my rook back, but it's too late in this position because after queen to f3 check, on the next move, the bishop is going to deliver the killing blow. Bishop to c3 is checkmate. And Stockfish just dismantles Trollfish in 39 moves but what's even more impressive is this video boys it's the new animal bots martin nelson and i teamed up against these animal bots i played some games in that video absolutely crazy games we have a great trick at the end so watch that and i'll see you boys in the next one bye